Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. I'm very excited today because we have a very special guest. Our guest is Jenny Lee, and he, she's here to talk, to talk to us today about burnout mom syndrome. And basically, it's a lot of moms and mo you know mothers who have a lot on their plate. They're taking care of their families. They're taking care of their children, their jobs, and they're balancing a lot of things. And, you know, they're focusing on the, their their kids and their life and everything that matters around them. And, they're and after a while, you can get really burnt out because you're not focusing on yourself. You're not giving yourself the, the self-love you need. You don't know how to get out of this syndrome because you put yourself in a routine that you're so used to doing every single day or the guilt of not knowing, you know, thinking that it's wrong wrong to focus on yourself and not focus and focus and to and to draw some of the attention away from the people you care for like your children and people don't know how to get out of this and and meanwhile they're just getting more and more drained and they are just destroying themselves slowly mentally physically and spiritually so jenny's here to talk about that and explain to you different ways different techniques how to turn your life around get yourself out of that unburnout mode and to enjoy life, enjoy yourself and how you can move forward in life and accomplish everything without feeling so drained and burnout. So Jenny, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to meet you. And I'm so excited to hear about what you have to tell us. So tell the world a little about yourself and what you do. Thank you so much for having me. I, well, I was just so excited to find your podcast and how it's helping a lot on mental health. And now we're talking about this um, because it covers a lot on mental health and spirituality. Um, and that's pretty much what I do too. So I, well, I call myself a habits coach because the, um, the work is really on developing the habit of happiness. Mm -hmm. And I work especially with moms who are burnt out and who needs a little infusion of joy in their lives. Yeah. And they could do that. Well, what I help them with is uh, building their morning routines because the morning could really be the time when the world is asleep and they could have that joy and that self-care without any guilt. Right. right. Yeah. And when the kids wake up, when it's time to go out in the world, they are already nourished and they're ready for everything yeah. and it's not that continuous place of mm, this regulated nervous system oh my god what's gonna happen um you know it was like oh the kids broke something and you'd go you know you'd be reactive because that was me mm -hmm. right um and yeah that's uh, pretty much what i do uh and i'm also a teacher i'm an english teacher if you heard the bell earlier <laughs> <laughs> a class being dismissed um and I can also uh tell you about how I get into this work because um honestly I am still the same person right I'm still a teacher I'm still a mom the difference is I know how to take care of myself at this point I know how to give love to myself so that I could do my job on a maximum level, you mm -hmm. know, the best that I could as a teacher, and I could be a better mom, better than before when I was burnt out. Yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, thinking back when I was a new mother, I was still learning, but that's the thing. Nobody really told us that mothers should really first put themselves first right? yes. because, you know, mothers, women, they are the soil of earth. When you don't take care of the soil, yeah. nothing can grow out of that, right? It needs fertilization. It needs love. It needs attention. Mm -hmm. And when it's dry, like a lot of women are running on, right? We're all, so many women are running on empty. Yeah. That soil can't grow anything beautiful to no. give to everyone else. 100%. And so that was my situation, um, I was a teacher, um, when I was a new mother, uh, so I would, of course I would go to work and I would come home and I would still be the cook, the cleaner, um, the caretaker, 
and a wife and then yeah. a teacher again for my son right mm. and that time it was small and uh it was all so tiring it was exhausting but i had to numb that part of me you know that exhausted part of me to just keep going making sure that my son is fed making sure that i took care of the house making sure that food is cooked Woo. Yeah. <laughs> At some point that was uh, taking toll uh, while well, it was taking toll on my physical health, my yes. mental health, spirituality, and I became irritable because I wasn't sleeping. Mm -hmm. And then there would be guilt when I took a nap. Yeah. <laughs> there would be guilt if I took a massage. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my gosh, I'm such a bad mom. <laughs> 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 Took him uh, and get a massage. So it's it's all these things. Um, but oh well. Um, of course that led to a divorce because mm -hmm. nobody could bear me, including my ex husband. At time, um, we were very unhappy because I was unhappy and I was emotionally unavailable for my child because I was always tired. Um, he would want to play with me. I, I couldn't, I just want to take a nap. I just wanted to sleep. I just wanted to hide in my bedroom. If he mm. wanted me to read a book, I just wasn't available. So it was just like, actually, yeah, it, um, you know, it, it is, it still kind of hurts thinking about it. It's like how rejecting I was of him. Like it w wasn't him. It really was me. That was not, um, pouring, uh, love into myself and giving what, you know, I didn't give what I needed. Yeah. So I did not have love to give to anybody else around me. Right. Like, yeah. And so after the divorce, I moved out of the house that um, we lived in. And then we had split custody. And I suddenly had this couple of days of me not having to take care of anybody. And I didn't know what to do with myself. Right. <laughs> It was strange, but that was when I realized um, why did my life crumble like that um, and, you know, how everything changed. But no, it was all working out for me. Honestly, thank God for the divorce, because without that, I wouldn't have learned. Right. right. I just wasn't taking care of myself. I was so disconnected from who I truly am, from who I truly was, to our, uh, from who I truly am. Yes. Um, and that um, um, that kept me away from the best person that I could be. Right. I, and instead, I just became this aggravated personality, yeah. <laughs> you know, irritable and angry and easily triggered. Um, and so I, I completely understand, um, you know, with moms who are exhausted and sometimes it's you know they snap so easily they're tired yeah. they need love 100%. Right? yeah and so one morning um and I was depressed too of course and you know there was like all the suicidal thoughts and it was just like what a mess um and so I was in, on this hamster wheel of misery, basically, and I got yeah. so comfortable with this heavy energy, with the misery, right, um, with a depressive mood. And so one morning, I woke up t just too early, just too early, and I couldn't go back to sleep. Um, all right, what am I going to do now? And so at some point, uh, a thought came through. I said, well, why don't you play some music? And that would probably make the air feel a little better, like it would make it lighter. But you know what? I had a resistance towards that. It was this war in my head. I was like, oh, that's stupid. What would I want to play music at 4.30 in the morning? Right, yeah. <laughs> um, right, and um, I had to push myself to turn that on. It's like, oh, okay. It actually feels better now that there's music. Oh, but you know what? Because there's music, now I feel like dancing. Oh, I feel mm -hmm. like moving my feet. But then there's this noise in my head again. There's this war, right, that came out because I was so used to the misery in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, why would I want to dance? That would look stupid. It was like, who's watching? Exactly. Yeah. Like, nobody's watching. But ugh, uh, I had to push myself to move, right? And so... That really reminded me of how there's a lot of mothers who resist love, like, you know, who have trouble receiving 
yes. like I did, right? Like I was, and you know what? Um, it's okay. Yeah. But push yourself to receiving just, you know, you deserve it. And so I did dance and it felt so good. And that really helped my mood that morning, yeah. just dancing to one or two songs. And then I thought, oh, that was fun. I should do this again, maybe tomorrow. So I would wake up 10 minutes early just so I could dance to one or two songs before work. And I would come to work actually with a lighter mood. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I felt better. And because before it was more just me doing my job, submit my lesson plans, ask the kids to do their work and then take my paycheck, go home. You know, it was right. like this mundane of a life. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, since I started dancing in the morning, I my mood became a better and I would come to school and actually had conversations with the kids yeah. you know and actually starting laughing with them and actually treated them like human beings you know, right. which I did not before because it was they're just a part of my routine I just want to get this over with and go home right. right a lot of us operate from an autopilot like that yeah definitely. what if you add more happiness what if you add more joy right and so that's what happened to me and um after a while, maybe a couple of months, no, oh, probably a month, I decided to add five more minutes so I could dance two more songs. And then I would add five more minutes so I could learn a, well, dance steps that I found challenging that time. And mm -hmm. I, would fi I would add five more minutes so I could practice uh, yoga uh, uh, inversion poses. Yes. And um, then it, uh, a few months later, I would add 15 more minutes because I learned about juicing so I could juice and wash the appliances. And I would add five, 10 more minutes for meditation and uh, breath work and cold shower. And now I have two hours of um, morning routines and it's all focused on me. And so when my child wakes up, like, oh, I'm this happy personality and yeah. I'm available for you. I'm available for you and I have all the energy. What do you want to do? Right. <laughs> so different from before. And it's also um the change in my personality. Um, I am not reactive um towards students who are misbehaving. And I have such a good relationship with my students and my colleagues. And I was like, oh, suddenly I don't hate this job anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so nothing really changed. My environment is still the same. I still have the same roles, but I actually enjoy my roles a lot more because I changed the lens that I was looking at things because I also changed um, my habits. Right. The habits of looking at um, my habits of, I don't know. I, yeah, I guess everything that I just explained <laughs> to you <laughs> of, of generating the energy of happiness and joy then uh, made me, um, that helped me come to an understanding that um, happiness is really a habit. Yes. Joy is a habit. And who's responsible of generating that? Right. Each of us. I yeah. Think I think the biggest thing is that people, especially when they have their first child, they feel that everything has to centerize around that one child. And they put so much energy in taking care of that one child that they sometimes even neglect their husbands. They mm -hmm. neglect every they neglect, neglect themselves. They're 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 working 24-7 and they're yeah. just focusing on that child. They're focusing on if they, if they have a job, their job, they're focusing mm -hmm. on all the responsibilities and duties of, of keeping the house, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, together, running errands, and they're just getting exhausted. And and like you said, they're they're they get slowly getting burnt out. And I would say so many times to these patients, I would say how, you know, I, they would say they feel guilty, but I would say, okay, but how can you take care of somebody else when you can't even take care of yourself? Mm -hmm. Cause you get to that point exactly. where you're so burnt out. You're so drained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when the anxiety sets in. Mm -hmm. That's when the frustration sets in and even depression and fatigue, you know, yes. how, do you, how do you roll out of bed and how are you able to do these things? If you can't even 
roll out of bed. You know, you're like forcing yourself to get out of that bed. Mm-hmm. Hey, when you wake up to a job that you don't like, or waking up to taking well to taking care of other people but yourself yeah. you are waking up to exhaustion to an exhausting day it's hard to wake up to yeah <laughs> but what if you wake up thinking that you will do something fun for yourself you are right. going to you're you're waking up to this loving thing um in, that nourishes you yeah that would be so much fun and another thing also why the morning um, yeah, I think we talked about how it is guilt-free <laughs> but yes. on a scientific level. Yeah. Um, when you first wake up in the morning, when your brain is still, you know, clean, it's yes. a clean slate. Um, it, the, the brain wave is in between Delta, the deep sleep wave yes. and theta mm-hmm. when you're still groggy, when you just woke up, that's the hypnotic state. Yeah. And so when you wake up and you think that I'm going to do something fun for myself, oh, it's going to be a fun day. I'm going to start my day with a lot of fun. You're excited to wake up to it. And then the 100%. next day, and then the next day, then your body and your mind would start associating waking up in the morning with positivity, with yes. fun and 100%. joy, right? And that's how it becomes a habit, right? Yes. And, and of course, uh, the opposite is true. Right. When you wake up, first thing, when you wake up in the morning, you remember problems from yesterday or it's going to be exhausting. That's the habit that's going to be perpetuated. Yes. And so put the seeds of positivity when you first wake up. Maybe the first thing uh, that is easiest is to say your gratitude. Yes. Say it. Say thank you. 10 times as you go to the bathroom to pee or, you know, right. Um, but it is that energy, that positive energy that you want to generate first thing in the morning when your brain is still clean. When, when it's, yeah. But of course I should also include that the last thought that you go to sleep with is the first thought that you wake up with. Oh, so you yeah. want to fall asleep happy. And that's why it's really important. Of course, you know, for moms, after all the hard work that you've done all day, you deserve some rewards. Give yourself a nice hot bath, hot shower, meditate, or do some stretching. Go to sleep happy. Say your gratitude before bed. The last thing that you're happy about <laughs> is the first happy thing that you wake up with. Like, oh, it doesn't want to wake up happy. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, and that that's how it becomes a habit. And that's how it's healing. That's awesome. I I love that the, your 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 tools and the strategies that you you've just talked about, and you know I think that it's very productive. I think if you actually train your mindset, and then one question I have for you is: you do have those moms, those moms that you know, even humans, you know, that aren't you know aren't mothers, getting out of the routine, those bad habits, you know, you get stuck in a routine, and you're so used to doing things accordingly. Bop, 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 bop. Mm. When I wake up, I do this. When I do this, I do this. Now, how do you get your mo to get up 10 minutes early and start this? How do you, you know, because we say we're going to do it, but then you still in your head, you still have this, this way of doing things. It's just like when you quit smoking, you have to break a bad habit. How is it, what kind of tips would you give somebody for starting this? You know, what's a great way to break the habits and to start a new routine? Because that's very hard for people, especially people who have a very anal way of thinking, you know, doing something different or the fear of change. What will happen if I change? Oh, no, I can't change. I have to do it this way. You know, how do you how do you get those people to, to change their mindset? Um, are you happy though with those habits? Mm -hmm. I think that would be the first question. That's a good question. Yes. Yeah. Does, how does that make you feel? Right. Is is that, uh, serving yourself? Mm -hmm. But how about this? Um, I don't believe anymore with self-judgment. And I think a lot of times, uh, when, uh, at least, you know, with me, when I became depressed, when, um, I came to just like really, really disliking myself. That was because this, because of this constant of self judgment, yes. right? And so it's like, oh, I didn't wake up early enough. Oh, I'm such a bad person. You know mm-hmm. that. I mean, different ways. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, a yeah. lot of us do that. That self criticism. But what if um, 
we set a low and easy standard. Yeah. That's why it's 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Right. And this week, try to wake up two times a week and do that happy thing for yourself. Okay. Right. And if you only get one, like, Hey, still better than last week. Yeah. hundred percent. Right? Celebrate that. And after you've done that 10 minutes of something that makes you happy, the dance or yoga, or just, um, a walk outside, celebrate that you got to yeah. do that for yourself. Right. Right. Like, wow, that's, that's amazing. Um, and another thing is also, um, instead of, of course, um, when we do certain things and it's not up to our standard, it's not mm -hmm. as good as we expected. You know what? I got it done anyway, and I'm going to try again and it's going to be better tomorrow. Right. right? right. But really appreciate yourself. And a lot of it is really, um, self-acceptance. Yes. And how, how much we value ourselves. Right. right? And, um, if you only know how much you've, how much you've done for other people mm -hmm. and all that love and attention that you've given to others, if only you could give some of that to yourself. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so important to empower ourselves that way, to see our value that way, that mm -hmm. we are deserving as much as other people of the love and attention and all the hard work that we've given other people to make sure that they're okay. Well, in order for them to be okay, you got to be okay first. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh -huh. Put it's yourself true. first. Mm -hmm. Now you've written a book about how to uh, build, you know, joyful happiness and how to bring happiness into your life. Can you tell us a little about the book that you wrote? Oh yeah. Uh, it's, it's a super short book because I want that to be digestible. It gives ideas uh, to people on how they could um, put some variety in their mornings mm -hmm. right? and some tips of how you could wake up um, easy. Because if you want to make, if okay, if you want to start a habit, yeah. Um, say somebody told me, wake up two hours tomorrow and go to the gym. Well, no, that's not going to happen. It's not sustainable because it's yeah. not fun. Right. So if you want to start a habit, it's really important that your your new habit, you make it easy and you make it fun. Yes. Because when you push yourself for a drastic change, first, it's not sustainable. And second, it puts stress on your body. 100%. And then you would feel bad because yeah. you couldn't do it. Why do that to yourself? So make it easy make it fun because right. when, when it's fun, when you find it fun, you want to do it again oh, and 100%. again, yeah. and then it becomes a good habit. Yes. Right. And so the book gives you ideas on the things that you could do and also ideas for nourishment. Um, yeah. And the things that I do myself that I've tested and uh, the, the advantages of that is um, I, I did include um, my cold shower routine and uh, my dad also read the book and he was like, oh, no, like that's that just doesn't make sense to me. Cold shower. <laughs> but you know what? Um, it's been advocated by a lot of experts. Yes. Um, a cold shower first thing in the morning um, is like, well, I mean, not doesn't have to be first thing in the morning. I would do a cold shower um, after my workout because you know, I'm, I'm warm, right? And yeah. so cold shower doesn't feel as bad, but it's cold shower is just like any other habits start easy, three seconds, just three seconds. And then after a week, give yourself five seconds, mm -hmm. right? Do that increments. Right. Then it's not as hard anymore. And then right. by the time, um, well, after you've done it for two months, it's like, Oh, look how far I've gone. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with any habits, right? 10 minutes and then 15 after a couple of weeks. And maybe the following month, you want to add five more minutes, but do it in a way that is kind to yourself yeah. and non-judgmental. Right. Exactly. A hundred percent. And I do hope that this helps because, um, especially with mental health, right. Yeah. And a lot of moms, a lot of women do need uh, that 
um, encouragement and oh, yeah. not knowing that they do deserve a lot of love oh, yes. and that they need to be put first and your joy is priority so that you can then give your joy and love to everybody else so that you can build your business, your family, your life from right. a place of love and joy. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think people have to realize that, you know, it's okay to love yourself. It's okay yeah. to take time for yourself and you're not doing anything wrong because, you know, people do feel guilty, you know, when they take mm-hmm. time for themselves, but as a mom and as a, you know, as, as a, a person in the workforce and a person running errands, trying to keep the whole house together, you deserve it. You deserve yeah. it. And people have to, everyone, you know, you don't even have to be a mom. Everybody needs to take time out to give themselves a little mm-hmm. self-love. I, With, you know, I without agree. self-love is self-destruction. And yeah. that's what we that's have to so avoid, important. you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I completely understand like how uh, it's so easy to fall into that kind of pressure, right? Yeah. Because that was me. And, you know, it seems like that's what's expected from women, Yes. And in this generation, it's just not acceptable anymore, you know, to put yourself like to give yourself that pressure and expectations. Exactly. Um, Yeah. You cannot hold a house together when, (laughs) when you're running on empty. No, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now, what was the title of that book that you wrote? Um, That is um, how to make a morning fun. Okay. I'm going to have to pull that up again because um it was a while ago, but I'll send you it's the on link. It's on Amazon, right? It's on Amazon. Okay. That's great to know. And then you also offer a coaching, you said also. Yes. I would love to connect with anybody who needs advice and suggestions on how to explore a little deeper on mm-hmm. what makes them happy in the morning. And so that you can make that a habit. So I would love to um, speak with you. That would be a three, 30 minute um, free coaching with me. And uh, you can start as soon as tomorrow. <laughs> now, where yeah. can they find that? Where can they find you to sign up for your coaching? I will send you the Calendly link so that they could um, schedule uh, with me. And awesome. I will also send you my social media details. And you can find me uh, usually active on Facebook and Instagram. And yeah, get connected with me. So for all my listeners, I'll put all this information in the description box. So you guys could find out more about Jenny Lee and you'll be able to click onto her links and find her book. And you'll be able to find her coaching sessions where you can schedule a coaching session if you're interested in. And also she does other topics too. Like she talks about leadership. She talks about, um, you know, spirituality in general and different lifestyle changes that you can make in your life to improve your life and make it more productive. So she offers a lot of different things, but this was one topic we wanted to cover because when we were talking to each other before the show, we thought how important it would be to talk about mom because moms really don't give themselves enough of self-love and en- enough of credit because they are the rock. And without a good, strong mm-hmm. mom who's able to hold the house together and, and be the the good the good mom, the good, the good wife, the good this, the good that, you know, things will fall apart. So, you know, moms need to learn how to give themselves self-love without feeling the self-guilt because there's nothing wrong with giving yourself a little TLC because just like, you know, Jenny had mentioned, once the gas tank goes on empty, you know, the car just stops. And Mm -hmm. if the car stops, you're not going to get to go to the places you want to go. And neither are your kids or your family members and you're not going to get anything (sighs) done. So you really have to learn how to, you know, really balance your life out. And, and the first thing you should really think about is really putting yourself on the pedestal first. It's okay. Mm. And then sharing love with you, yourself, your family, and giving all that lo- energy that you created in yourself to everyone else around you. But, you know, you've made that point very clear. Jenny, you've given us so much valuable information. And I love how you introduced, how you introduced a way, because the mornings are so important. The way you go to sleep in the morning, the, the way you go to sleep and at night is very important because you do get affected. The last thing you think about at night is true that you wake up with that mentality. 
And then mm -hmm. the energy and, and what you do in the morning can clear out, clear out your, 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 all your negative thoughts. It can give you energy. It can give you a positive, you know, attitude and it can change your whole day and your whole life. So all these things you mentioned are just fabulous and to teach oh, people how to you. do it, I think would be amazing. So everybody contact Jenny Lee, look at her book, look at the offerings she has. And I think some of the things she just talked about just briefly today could actually change your life. So Jenny, thank you so much for coming to the show. It's been great having you here. You're so welcome. And thank you so much for having me and, um, and chat with me. It's been so much fun. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. I do have a last word, um, mm -hmm. last words, <laughs> you know, think about it. If it's not fun, it's not worth it. Oh, I like yeah, that. So ask yourself if this is fun, if this is making me happy and say, if you think that this is boring, if it's mundane, right. And you wash the dishes or doing laundry or <laughs> chores in the house, cleaning, ask yourself, how can I make this fun? And this is also part of self-care. Yes. You know, I and like that. That's how you can be present and give yourself that love and fun in any activity. I like that. That is a hundred percent true. Very good. Good way to end the show. I like that. Thank you so much, Jenny. This has been a pleasure and I'd love to have you back on the show so we could discuss these, you know, things that furtherly. So definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. You have a great day, Jenny. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.